When I first started telling people that the plan was to build community gardens at public schools in the city of New Bedford, some people were skeptical. The teachers at the first school were excited and hopeful, but wondered if families would actually show up to participate. This particular school had extremely low family engagement, and 95% of the student body was living at or below the poverty line. Needless to say, there were obstacles. The teachers and I hosted our first garden planning night on a brisk November evening. We had 15 families show up. This was the most the school had seen attend a single event in years. And the group was diverse. There was one family that stood out in my mind that was there representing three generations. The grandmother, who spoke primarily Portuguese, told us all how to make soup out of the tops of beets and radishes. She said nothing should go to waste. Another mother was there with a list of vegetables, too expensive to buy in the grocery store. She told us about her family's favorite dish, stuffed green peppers. That year, we planted an entire row of green peppers. The teachers and I walked away from that night feeling excited and inspired by the cultural knowledge these families brought to the table and the fact that they showed up. Students planted seedlings in their classrooms and the teachers and I planned another engagement day for the spring. But again, there was a fear not many parents would really show up. Come a sunny Saturday morning in May, the schoolyard was flooded with over 100 family members. What was it about a community garden that moved these parents to show up. Sure, some of them had cultural gardening knowledge that they were eager to put to use, but others had never gardened before. And truth be told, neither had I. I'm a city girl who's been known to kill her houseplants. But maybe people were there for the same reason I love doing the work I do. It builds community. The garden creates a space where people can engage in meaningful and authentic ways. Where a parent can participate not in a formal parent-teacher conference, but in real life. As many of us know, urban public schools often have low family engagement. And we also know that family engagement is critical to students feeling engaged and excited about learning. When I was growing up, I attended a public elementary school in Providence, Rhode Island. Both my parents were actively engaged in my education. They attended open houses, parent-teacher conferences, and even chaperoned a few field trips. More power to them. <laughs> Some things you should know about my parents. They were white, middle class, held nine to five jobs, had graduate degrees, and had reliable transportation. Engaging in the existing structure for family engagement was not only easy, it was as if the system was designed for families that looked like mine, despite the fact that my parents were lesbians. But that's a whole other talk. The point is, because of my parents' race and class, my white middle-class teachers found us easy to connect with. Demographically, New Bedford is home to many Azorian and Cape Verdean families, hence the kale, and a fast-growing Central American population representing countries such as Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. What do these dominant cultures of New Bedford have in common? A passion and a skill for growing food. The work my program does in New Bedford is not building your typical school garden. Really, our focus is on building community through the act of growing food collectively. We co-create with teachers, neighbors, families, community gardens located on public school land. I call them community school-based gardens. That's a mouthful. Community school-based gardens. So let me break that down. A school garden is a garden located at a school is typically used for curriculum and play, but is not generally open to the public. A community garden, on the other hand, is a model that is deeply rooted, no pun intended, in social justice and democracy. The ownership is in those who tend it. Social justice, democracy, and community are core values of a community garden, along with the belief that access to healthy food is a human right. So in essence, a community school-based garden is a hybrid approach. By day, the garden is used as an outdoor classroom, and after school hours is open for the community. Like many urban cities, New Bedford struggles with high poverty and food insecurity. However, in New Bedford, we have a unique situation. On one hand, we have families from cultures where growing food is not just second nature, it's in their soul. 
and yet those very families tend to be food insecure. On the other hand, we have public schools, one of the last standing public institutions in this country with land, and in some cases, a lot of land. In New Bedford, I believe we can create spaces for increasing social capital, cultural capital, access to healthy food, while simultaneously creating engaging outdoor classrooms through the implementation of community school-based gardens. Community school-based gardens can also be used as a tool to connect the teachers that work within a school with the outside community. More often than not, these two groups of people represent different class and or race backgrounds. Normally, the white middle-class teacher does not live in the same neighborhood as their students. One afternoon, I was sitting around a table with about 12 teachers discussing our garden kickoff night. And one teacher asked me, how will the garden be protected? A fence was one suggestion. This teacher came from a place of concern for the effort her fellow teachers, families, and students were going to invest in this garden, but didn't trust that the community would be respectful of their efforts. We discussed this as a group and decided collectively that we did not feel comfortable putting a fence around food. That if we were truly to have a community, to have a true community garden, it would require us to have a certain level of trust and vulnerability. And that if something should happen, we would problem solve it collectively and take it as a learning opportunity. The garden was built in April, and we had over 90 family members show up to help shovel dirt and build beds. The beautiful thing about a garden is it truly redistributes power to the point where everyone is literally shoveling manure. In May, a team of families and teachers came to transplant seedlings, and the garden grew all summer long, as did our gardening community. In August, I was getting my nails done. Yes, I work in gardens, and I also enjoy getting a manicure from time to time. And that teacher who asked about the fence came up to me with a big smile on her face and she said, do you remember me? And I said, of course I do. She told me that the gardens were beautiful and that no one had disturbed them. And then she said that her initial reaction was wrong. This teacher learned through the garden to increase her trust and respect for the community her students live in and thus increased her trust and respect for her students. Another reason I love working in community gardens is I get to witness adults being just as excited to play with dirt as children are. Last spring, I was working with a group of teachers at an elementary school in New Bedford, and we decided that over April vacation, we were going to host our garden building day. So on a day during April vacation, a coveted thing by most teachers, almost every single educator in that building showed up, in addition to about 50 family members. That day we had some hiccups. We had a drill battery die, luckily we had a backup, but that, ba that drill needed to be plugged in and the outside of old school buildings do not have outlets. So we were attempting to run an extension cord from a second floor window out into the garden and we just were falling a little short. Luckily we had a man there who lived just down the block and made his living in construction and therefore had a plethora of tools. He probably made three or four trips back and forth getting things we needed. Truly the garden hero of the day. And after everything was all said and done, the beds were assembled and families were dispersed, I asked the principal who this man was in connection to the school. And she told me that he was a student's grandfather, but that she had never met him before. The question we should ask ourselves is not, what is wrong with his grandfather that he never participated before, just today? But rather, what is it about our current way of engaging families that is so disengaging for him and so many others? What was it about this garden building day that engaged him? And I don't know for sure, but I anticipate that at the end of the day, everyone wants to feel worthy and valued. And it wasn't until this garden building day that this particular grandfather felt he had something meaningful to contribute. And I bet that his engagement will grow now that he has made a meaningful connection to his granddaughter's principal and teacher. Again, the garden is a place where people build relationships, where a student watches as their parents whose farming roots are in Guatemala teach their teacher how to transplant green beans. What an amazing thing for a child to experience, 
particularly when our society can be full of such blame and shame for poor and immigrant families. In fact, our immigrant families have an incredible amount to teach us when it comes to growing food, something we in the United States lost connection with years ago. I have met students who think eggs grow on trees or have never before tasted a raw red pepper, or are learning for the first time that indeed carrots come from the ground. And for the record, it is true, what a student grows, they will try, and in most cases enjoy. And sometimes that tasting will turn into a contest of who can take the biggest bite of a raw radish when working with elementary school boys. <laughs> the work of creating community school-based gardens in every single New Bedford public school is only entering its third year, and we have a lot of kinks to work out. However, the passion from the families and community, principals and teachers is palatable. In an education world full of tests and a society that values and encourages individualism over community, it is critical that we create spaces for connection, face-to-face -face connection. In our work, we hope to create platforms within our public schools to affirm families and their cultures and to create a sense of belonging for everyone through the act of growing real food feeding our minds, our bodies, and our souls, truly working with and for our common core. Gardens are just one platform. There are so many ways you can connect with people around you. I'm smiling, remembering a day I met a teacher in, in a parking lot early one morning so that she could hand me a batch of her school garden-grown homemade tabbouleh. I knew that day I had made a solid connection. <laughs> I challenge you to make connections in your life with people who are similar and different from you. I believe it is in those connections and relationships that we build space for compassion. And I believe that it is that compassion and connection to each other and to the earth that will ultimately create a more peaceful, sustainable, equitable, and just society. Thank you, New Bedford. Enjoy your day.